Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and TV Industry. You're here with Jennifer Lynn Warren, an actor living here in Hollywood, California, trying to figure it all out and sharing everything that I figure out with you guys. So today, you know I love my quotes. Mother Teresa said, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. Let us begin. So I recently reread a book that I read years ago that you've probably heard of. It's called The Seven, Hab the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And what really struck me in the book this time around, it was habit number four. And number four, he says, is to put first things first. You want to prioritize your work. You want to focus on what's important, meaning the things that bring you closer to your vision of the future and that you shouldn't be getting distracted by urgent but unimportant tasks. So as, as actors, we over-focus on things that are urgent but unimportant, like text messages or emails or helping a friend with an audition. And it's important, but we tend to think that things like this actually help our careers and they do a little bit, but it's not what's going to push us over the edge, right? Or watching the newest episode of Handmaid's Tale, right? Like we got to stay up to date on what TV shows that we should be performing in, right? Isn't that important for us to do as actors? Yes, they they are you know, they're, they're kind of important and they feel urgent, but these are these tasks that, that they make you feel like you're getting ahead in your career, but they only give you the illusion that you are. And what we really need to focus on are the things that are important, but they are not urgent. Well, why? Because if they are not urgent, it's so easy to put it off. For example, uh, writing that short film that you have an idea for that you want to star in or exercising because your dream is to play a Marvel superhero and you got to be in great shape for that. But you keep telling yourself, ah, I can always do it tomorrow or actually sitting down and writing down your goals as an actor and then executing them or checking in with your agent or taking that acting class or budgeting for your career. It's been shown that the most successful people spend time doing the important but not urgent things in their careers. That's how they become successful. So what is important to you as an actor that you've been putting off just because it doesn't seem that urgent? So after reading the book, Real Talk, I realized that one of the things that didn't seem urgent but really is important to do was slate shots on your actor's access profile. So <laughs> why, why do we need a slate shot? You know, after all, they cost $5 per slate shot, which I think is ridiculous. It's $5 per slate shot to upload. So I ended up paying about $45 to upload my slate shots this week. Um, you already have a reel, so, you know, why do you need this? And you doubt anyone's really going to watch them anyway. And, the, you know, the sad thing is when casting directors see submissions, the actors that have a slate shot attached to the photo that went with this submission go to the top of the casting file and they get seen first. So even if nobody ever sees your slate shot, Unfortunately, it's worth it to have it because, you know, it could be up against, let's say, you and somebody else who's just your type. And if you have a slate shot, a reel, a headshot, and an agent, you're going to go to the top of the pile, like the top of the page that the casting director sees, like who got submitted for the role above the person that does not have that slate shot. So that's why I went ahead and bit the bullet and I did it. 
and I took a really unique approach to my slate shots that I shared on my Facebook page, uh, Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and TV Industry, the Facebook page under that title. I shared that earlier today because I really don't think anyone's ever going to watch my slate shots, but if they ever click on it, I want them to be very amused and entertained and I wanted it to be on brand. So if you're curious, go ahead and check it out there. I'd love to see what you think. So I got an email from a longtime listener of ours, Sean Frost. Hey, Sean, how you doing? And he sent me an email and he asked, any chance of doing a very basic Hollywood etiquette primer? Although a fair amount of the podcast seems to have this advice anyway, maybe like a greatest hits thing or most important piece of etiquette when networking or meeting an agent or when coming into a set for the first time. Don't know if that would fit into one podcast episode, but it's an idea. So I actually think this is a great question because, you know, I feel like actors tend to focus on the wrong things when they're in a networking event or when they're talking to an agent. And the thing that actors like to focus on is themselves. And they like to focus on how can everybody help me? Uh, who can get me a role? What can everyone do for me? Here I am. Me, 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 me. And that is the biggest turn off ever. Anytime you're talking to anyone in any industry for any reason, think of it like going on a date. And if you've ever been on a date in that other person, all they did was talk about themselves and they never asked you about you. It's the biggest turn off, isn't it? And you begin to wonder, is this person really interested in me or are they just trying to use me to get me into bed? And it's actually a really great metaphor, um, as harsh as that may sound. So when you're at a networking event, the question you should be asking uh, in your subtext of everyone you talk to is you want to be interested in them and you want to figure out and ask yourself this over and over and over again. Is there something I can do to help them? Is there something in what they're saying that they need for whatever project that they're doing that they need that I can introduce them to somebody else or something that I can do? And it never, it's never, hey, I'm that actor that could play that role unless it is stupid specific like they're like I need somebody that knows how to talk to dolphins and can make them eat fire and you're like hey I made dolphins eat fire at the San Diego whatever water park which you know don't do that don't make dolphins eat fire that is a horrible horrible example but because it's such a horrible example I think that it's really vivid in its imagery of the fact that if you can pitch yourself to somebody in a moment, it's usually because it's something that stupid specific, which is why I use such a ridiculous example. Oh God, I just can't even think about dolphins breathing fire. It makes me sad in my heart right now. <laughs> it's just not what they want to do as far as I know, though that would be funny if we learned their language and they kept saying, all we want to do is breathe fire, humans, please teach us. That's why we hang out with you. All right, I'm being ridiculous and running on. As far as set etiquette goes, there is unfortunately a pecking order. So the advice that I would give to somebody who is a series regular or an A-lister is gonna be different than the advice I'd give to somebody who is a co-star versus someone who's an extra. If you're going and doing background work, don't bother anybody. Do your job, do the best job that you can. You can network with fellow background artists on there, but unfortunately that's pretty much it as far as you're being able to network and the etiquette. Like don't eat their craft services, only eat the craft services provided for you. Believe me, those guys are working longer and harder hours than you are and they're there day in and day out. So if you're, their coconut water is not available because you drank it all, that's just rude. So if you are a co-star, there is, um, of course, so much more leverage that you have as far as, you know, being able to introduce yourself to people. I'm a big fan of saying hi to the DP and saying, hey, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, of course, the first AD is going to be your first line of defense of, on what's happening because when you're on a show, especially like Criminal Minds or NCIS that's been running for a very, very, very long time, it's a well-oiled machine and those actors don't need to be told what to do. So as a co-star, you have the hardest job there on set. Like it, because people 
forget that you haven't been there for months or years doing this and they just expect you to know everything. So just be very polite and very courteous. Just always be a nice person. You, and you're going to feel when you have the right vibe with someone if they want to talk and if they don't want to talk. And if they don't want to talk, guys, don't talk to them. It's like the same etiquette for actors. It's just like real world etiquette and common sense, which unfortunately is not that common. And now if you're moving into the guest star and recurring role scene, that's when you are going to see that people are going to be more open up to you. The stars are going to talk to you a lot more. Um, you're going to have more of a leverage to be like, hey, do you want to run lines? That's not, you know, unheard of to ask for. I will ask for that if I am in a guest star or recurring role situation. I always ask to run lines with my, you know, fellow actors and, you know, get to talk to the crew at that point. If you're going to be working with them for a while, they're going to be more comfortable with you, you know, when you get to be comfortable with them. And what's important there is knowing what their job is. If you don't know what their job is, if you don't know what a DP does or an steady cam operator or what the B camera department does, then you don't know when you're going to be interrupting them and when is a good time for you to introduce yourself. So the first thing you need to do is look up everything about what everybody on a set does and get to know their job so that you know when it's appropriate and be curious you know be like hey um you know we were doing this shot but you know now we're doing over the shoulder but i was sitting over there so why are we shooting it this way and if it's a law and you know they're waiting for cameras waiting for lights and camera doesn't have anything to do they'll they'll appreciate you asking them if you're genuinely curious about how everything's done and you're really nice and you're really easy to work with, be easy to work with, guys. The few people that are not easy to work with, everyone knows their names and we don't really see them much on the TV anymore or in movies. Okay, guys, that's it. Short and sweet today. I do want to thank you guys for my new iTunes, uh, yeah, iTunes reviews. For Prime Primer gave me a really great review. They said, if you want a good primer on how to get a good start in Hollywood, know what you're talking about and not get egg on your face. Jennifer is the one to help with that. This podcast should be required listening for actors who are new or even not so new to Hollywood and serious about acting there. So thank you very much for thinking it's uh sean kana kana who put that out there and also a thank you to the otr super fan in poodle scoot who also gave me uh great itunes reviews and thank you very much for john r who gave me a great review for my book he said a great read for anyone in the industry or looking to break into the industry and then uh sarah larinas dolan i'm sorry if i mispronounce your middle name we know each other from the self-management for actors facebook group she downloaded my book and she said just started reading it today and i'm really enjoying it your generosity of information is so heartening and i love your style of writing as well it's almost as if you're chatting over coffee very honest and real i appreciate you sharing this thank you for all that love guys it felt like christmas this week with all the reviews coming in it was awesome so break a lake out there and remember you are not alone